In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you're well. It is Tuesday, the... not Tuesday. It is Wednesday, the 12th day of June, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2024. Our gospel passage is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. We have said that Matthew's gospel is primarily directed at a readership with a Jewish background. It is clear that their Jewish background and traditions were things which were not easy for Christian converts to give up. Both Paul and Matthew go out of their way to assure Jewish converts that Christianity is not a rejection of Judaism, but its natural development. It is everything that Judaism is and more. So, in today's passage, which continues the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus solemnly assures his readers, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Jesus has come not to terminate the law, but to bring it to a higher level. In a very rough simile, it is like upgrading of a computer by upgrading its operating system. It is still the same computer doing the same things, only better. The vision of Jesus helps us to see the law in a new light. So Jesus says that the law is still to be observed. Of course, we will see very clearly in the following days exactly what Jesus means. He is not saying that every single injunction of the law, some of which seem very strange to us, has to be literally observed, but rather that the spirit behind those injunctions is still in force. His words are meant to console, but they are also a charge, as we shall see. The new law does not mean simply the addition of new elements. There is what we would call now a paradigm shift to a way which goes beyond laws to the law of love. In our church, too, we need to be ready to move forward creatively to new ways of understanding our faith and leaving it out. The traditions of the past are still valid, but we must never get bogged down in them to the extent that we do not respond to the clear signs of the times. Tradition can be understood in two ways, either as a fundamental belief that has existed from the very beginning or simply a way of doing or understanding things which has been around for a long time. When we are the church stop changing, we hear some people ask. The answer is, hopefully, never. The day we close ourselves to change is the day we die. As Paul warns us in the second letter to the Corinthians, to quote 
Cardinal John Newman. To live is to change. To be perfect is to have changed often. Cardinal Newman knew about change. He made radical changes in his own understanding of the Christian faith. Changes which he saw as unavoidable, although they involved great sacrifices on his part and led him from the Anglican to the Catholic Church. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as I start this Wednesday, I am reminded of your call to bring people into your kingdom. I want to live out your teachings in my daily life, but sometimes I am afraid. Forgive me for sometimes not listening to your spirit nudging me to talk to someone about you. Help me to put you first in my life and to follow you with all my heart. Just as your disciples did when they left everything behind to follow you, help me to surrender my own desires and plans to your will and to walk in the path that you have set before me. Lord, I know that following you is not always easy. There are times when I am tempted to turn away from your ways and to follow the ways of the world. But I pray that you would help me to resist those temptations and to stay committed to you and your truth. Give me the courage to take up my cross and follow you, even if it means sacrificing my own comfort and desires. Help me to be obedient to your commandments, to live a life of love, and to serve others with humility. Help me remember that a life following you is not one of rules but of grace. Grace for others and grace for myself. Dear Lord, I pray that you would give me a heart for the lost, just as you gave to your disciples. Help me to be a fisher of men, sharing your love and truth with those around me who do not yet know you. May my life be a testimony to your grace, and may others come to know you through my actions and words. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your endless grace. Help me to follow you with all my heart and to live out your teachings in my daily life. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friend, I remain your priest and servant, Father C.K., wishing you a productive Wednesday. Thank you.